Heaven's Gate, Waterworld, Ishtar, Cutthroat Island, Titan A.E. These are films that are known primarily for failing at the box office, and not just failing. These are the big ones, the career killers, the studio destroyers, the infamous box office bombs. Now obviously financial failure isn't always about the quality of the movie. In fact, some major box office disappointments are among the greatest films of all time, while some of the highest grossing movies are just a waste of everyone's time. However, that stigma still follows a lot of movies around. It failed at the box office, so it must be bad. Well, today we're going to take a look at one of the most notorious box office bombs of all time, Raise the Titanic. Released in 1980 in the wake of its best-selling source novel by Clive Cussler, the film almost destroyed its production company, ITC Entertainment, and led Cussler to refuse the adaptations of any more of his books. For a while, at least. <laughs> Needless to say, he hasn't sold the rights to any more of his novels since then. But enough about the fallout, what about the movie itself? Does it deserve the reputation it got? Well, yes and no. At its best, Raise the Titanic is a decent little British techno-thriller, kind of like a really, 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 really understated and serious version of North Sea Hijack. Sadly, at its worst, it can be pretty boring. It does have its moments, though. The cast is strong for the most part, with class act Richard Jordan leading the production as the iconic Dirk Pitt. The always enjoyable Jason Robards pops up too, and there's a really awesome, if abbreviated, appearance by Alec Guinness as one of the last living survivors of the Titanic disaster. She was one of a kind. No question about it. And God himself, they said, couldn't sink her. Then in two hours, she was gone. And 1,500 souls with her. The plot of the film concerns a rare mineral called bazanium that could turn the tide of the Cold War struggle between the U.S. and the Soviet Union. An American spy discovers that a large shipment of the stuff was sent out in 1912 on board, you guessed it, the RMS Titanic. And so it's up to adventurer Dirk Pitt and the U.S. Navy to retrieve the mineral by whatever means necessary, even if it requires raising the sunken ship from the ocean depths. So why did it flop? Well, the reason's pretty obvious, sadly. The final film, which went ridiculously over budget to begin with, just isn't blockbuster material. That's not to say that it couldn't have worked as a big movie. I mean, I can see why producer Lou Gray decided to greenlight the project. Clive Cussler's novel was very popular at the time, and there's a lot of potential for an exciting crowd pleaser in there. You've got a timely and intense Cold War story, a grizzled adventurer hero, and there's an epic historical element to the plot as well. In the right hands, it could have made a top-notch cocktail of Jack Ryan and Indiana Jones, and there was definite potential for a franchise in there. Unfortunately, the massive budget, madcap production, and hard work of all the artists and craftsmen involved were spent on a boring script that frankly didn't lend itself well to a major motion picture. The pacing is glacial, the characters are flat, and the dialogue resides in a swanky penthouse apartment in Exposition City. And for a thrilling action movie, there's barely any action in the film at all. That's not to say that a good political thriller needs action to be successful, but it does require some tension and drama, which Raise the Titanic unfortunately has a limited supply of. Heck, there were barely enough thrilling scenes to edit together a trailer. Control, this is Deep Quest at 8,000 feet. Negative contacts. This is Turtle. No contacts. The movie's trailer is boring, and with a marketing campaign like that, it's not difficult to see why it didn't make back its $40 million budget. Keep in mind, that's more money than The Empire Strikes Back cost to make, and they both came out the same year. Yeah. So, the movie's not a lost masterpiece. Then why bring it up? Well, despite its flaws, Raise the Titanic does have a few things going for it, the first of which is an amazing score by John Barry. We've said it in previous reviews, and it's worth saying again. John Barry is one of the greatest film composers who ever lived. His work brought so much life and color to some of the most iconic films of all time, and several merely okay movies have been improved and given a whole new emotional layer thanks to his work. On Raise the Titanic, Barry proved his mastery of the soundtrack by delivering yet another winner. The score gives new verve to numerous sequences, from its brooding and mysterious pieces for the underwater scenes, to a thrilling militaristic march symbolizing the Cold War struggle, to a lyrical and romantic theme for the Titanic itself. As I mentioned before, the movie has pacing issues, and during the second act there are several extended scenes of murky underwater exploration during the search for the lost Titanic. In these moments especially, Barry keeps things intriguing even when the story drags. However, the other major reason to check out this movie is even more exquisite. What is it? Well, it's right there in the title. Okay, here's the setup. Dirk's salvage crew has labored for a long time, an especially long time for the audience, <coughs> uh, to prep the Titanic for its voyage to the surface, but then disaster strikes. The Deep Quest, one of the submersibles, has become hopelessly stuck, and the only possible way to save them is by enacting the mission dangerously ahead of schedule. And so, 
with a lack of preparation and multiple lives in the balance, not to mention all the pressures of a cold war hanging over his head, Jordan's character orders the detonation that will dislodge the formerly unsinkable ship and with an insane amount of luck, save the crew of the Deep Quest in the process, leading to the ultimate moment of truth. The result is nothing short of awe-inspiring. Raising the Titanic is, in my opinion, one of the most truly epic sequences in film history, and it gives me chills every time I see it. The flawless model work, combined with John Barry's achingly beautiful score and the basic historical wish fulfillment of seeing the Titanic rise again, are almost overpowering to behold. Although the rest of the movie suffers somewhat from the slow-moving narrative, this scene benefits a lot from the film's deliberate pacing. The minutes before the ship begins to ascend are nail-bitingly suspenseful, with every shot and drawn-out action adding intensity to the situation. The following scene, in which Pitt walks through the ship inspecting the rusty remains of the once mighty sailing vessel, contained a very haunting poignancy, and thanks to the set design and direction of the scene, it's very easy for one to imagine the Titanic as it was when she first sailed, teeming with life and frivolity. After a moment like that, the endless, murky, dull underwater exploration scenes we had to endure beforehand seem almost worth it, like an obstacle to overcome in order to get to the glorious payoff. I may have shown you a few moments of the scene, but trust me, you need to see the complete thing for yourself, preferably on the biggest TV with the most powerful sound system you can find. It's definitely something that every film lover should experience at least once. Maybe it's telling that the best scene in the whole movie barely features any of its characters, but whatever you think of the rest of Raise the Titanic, it's hard to ignore the sheer wonder of its finale, and personally, I think there are quite a few things to love about the movie. Either way, I highly recommend putting aside its notorious reputation and checking it out for yourself. You might be surprised at the treasures you'll find. Just make sure you have a lot of caffeinated beverages on hand. That second act can be kind of brutal. This has been Joel Davidson for The Cinemologist saying, I'll see you next time. I'll bet you did. <laughs>